Welcome to a new series on my channel that I'm calling Things That I Experienced While Attending BYU. I personally would like to forget that I ever attended BYU, but I suppose God has other plans for me. So as opposed to wallowing in it, I thought I'd just share it with all of you for your entertainment. So BYU has a curfew for all students. It doesn't matter how old you are, you have a curfew. And some apartment buildings will take this so far as to have like key cards that you scan to get into the building that mark when you come in late. I think the curfew is like 11 or maybe it's 12. I can't remember exactly. And if you come home late a certain number of times, they'll flag you. And my freshman year, I was out late a lot, but I didn't have a key card or any, any way to be tracked really that I was coming in late as opposed to, I guess, security footage, but that never really was a problem. But I did have a roommate who kept an Excel spreadsheet of all of our names and all of the times we came home late. I also imagine she probably kept other things on the spreadsheet, like times that we had boys over or times where we were loud, but she would sleep on the couch to catch us coming home late. It was a daily occurrence that we had to get around. And I have a lot more stories about her, so she will probably be a multi-parter. If I'm gonna talk about this roommate in particular, I need to start at the beginning so that everyone can get like a full picture. Some kind of background information, I graduated high school and grew up for the most part overseas. So going to a university in America was kind of a big deal for me. And when I got my roommate list, I kind of reached out to everyone in the group. So it was an apartment with eight girls and two to a room. And me and my room roommate got along really well. Her name's Emma, we are still the best of friends. I set her up with her now husband, so. And for the most part, I got along with the other girls pretty okay. But we formed this group chat of like everyone in the apartment that we were going to be rooming with. And we were all freshmen and she was like a sixth or seventh year senior. Like she was 26 and we were all like 18. And the first few messages that we all sent, we were all like, oh, I'm so sad to leave my dog or da 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 whatever. And this roommate, before we had even met her, before any of that, called us stupid and like childish for saying that we were gonna miss our families when we left for college. That was our first impression. And it was something that me and my other roommate really bonded over. And I saw lots of comments that are like, what is she doing now? What is she doing now? I don't know, but I hope she's happy. I hope she's good. <laughs> but I've got many a story and I'll probably start a little series on here because of how many stories I have. But shout out to her. Welcome to part three of my terrible roommate that I had while attending BYU. <laughs> so at one point this roommate got sick and she was sleeping on the couch in our living room like for like a week and a half the entire time she was sick, like coughing into the couch, like all these different things, just kind of like leaving plates and bowls around the couch and like tissues. And this was a few months before COVID. So not to be like a white person, but it could have very well been COVID. Probably not, none of us got sick, but who, you, who knows? So she was sick on our couch every day and we only had two couches and we certainly weren't gonna use the one that she was being sick on. And so we were like, hey, um, why don't you go sit in your room if you're gonna be sick? And she kind of just always blew us off and da 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 Well, and she kind of just always blew us off. So at some point we ended up going into her room. I can't remember why, we weren't just snooping. There was some reason that we were there, but we went into her room and it was like she had never unpacked from moving in. Like there were clothes and dishes and like pots just in, in the bedroom on the floor in her bed and they were like used dishes too. And it was just like a whole disaster. And she had a roommate like in her room with her and her side of the room was like incredibly clean, like so clean. And all of us like, we're like, what do we do? Because the other thing that's funny about BYU is that you have clean checks on like your dorms. So like an RA pretty much comes through and makes sure everything's clean. And if it's not clean, you have to pay $5. That's a whole other side thing. I don't want to get into that. But she like had been passing her checks. So we were like, what the hell? <laughs> but it's pretty like indicative of the rest of her personality. Just always very messy and just kind of hard to work with. 
Welcome to Apply or Deny, the series where I do your college research for you. Here are five things you should know about BYU. Number one, rules. There's no alcohol, smoking, or drugs of any kind, no beards, no shorts above the knee, no profanity, and no coffee or tea sold by the campus. There's also a strict ban on premarital sex that led to one basketball player losing his position on the team. Number two, those rules are in place because of Mormonism, BYU's religious establishment. More than 97% of the student body is Mormon and one in four undergrads are married. However, all religions are welcome and there's a specially designated space for Muslim students to practice practice their daily prayers. The school's stance on so-called homosexual behavior, including same-sex hand-holding and kissing, is confusing, as the written ban has been removed, but the administration has since reaffirmed that it's prohibited. Number three, BYU has excellent business and law schools with one of the top accounting programs in the country. Business, marketing, and related majors are also the most popular among undergrads. Number four, cost. The school is shockingly inexpensive due to heavy LDS funding. Mormons get half-off tuition, but even for non-Mormons, the price rivals that of the cheapest in-state public schools. Grad programs are not particularly costly either. And number five, BYU is frequently named the most conservative school in the entire country, although there are more liberal students than you think. Right-leaning students tend to feel that their free speech is much more accepted at BYU than other schools. Please hit that follow! Okay. Yes, because I believe that Jesus can clean anything. The question was, would you date somebody who isn't a virgin? And this man said, Jesus can clean anything. Dear Father in Heaven, I've met the woman I want to marry, and she's like super cool and hot, but she's a sinner. So I was hoping that you could bless me with like your holy shamwow to clean her impure cutie. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Utah, that's predominantly Mormon. And let me tell you, I have some interesting stories. At BYU, you really have a mix of different guys. I basically split it up into two groups. You have your Molly Mormon boys or Peter Priesthoods, and then you have the wild boys. The word Molly Mormon or Peter Priesthood is kind of slang in the Mormon church for people who are like very to the book. Let me give you a little example. I was seeing this guy on the football team I mean, he wasn't actually playing, but he was telling me a story about how he hurt his finger at practice. And because he hurt his finger, he wasn't going to be playing in the next game. So being an athlete myself, I was like, wow, weren't you so pissed that you can't play now because of your finger? He deadass looks at me and says, I don't use the word pissed. And he goes, I think it's classless and trashy. So I knew right then the things between us were never going to work out. Because if he didn't like that word, he wasn't going to like a lot of words that I say. So there are your Peter Priesthoods, but granted, that's a very mild example in a lot more extreme cases. And you got your wild boys. When I say wild, I mean wild for BYU. These are basically just your stereotypical F boys, most of them being athletes. But then you also got your wolves in sheep clothing. And those a lot of times happen to be the RMs. RM means return missionary. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of amazing return missionaries who come back to BYU. The wolves in sheep clothing that I'm talking about are the RMs that have the scripture verse in their bio, but then they're trying to get you drunk every weekend and peer pressure you and get into your pants. And for those who are confused what I'm talking about with all this drinking and stuff at BYU, there's a whole underground party scene. And I know all about it because I used to be a part of it. So this is some drama from my old college. I eventually transferred out because of how weird and sexist it was there. I could honestly make a 62 part series of all the weird sexist stuff that went on there. So BYU-Idaho is really weird when it comes to women's modesty. In a way that BYU itself isn't, because like these are the BYU-Idaho cheer uniforms, these are the BYU cheer uniforms. Anyway, to go to the gym you have to wear this uniform. In like 2015, 2016, they changed it so that people could now wear black exercise pants. Essentially, the men of the school lost their minds. They submitted a petition saying this. They basically said that women are not following the prophet by wearing exercise pants. These were posted in the school newspaper. This is a guy who just does not get it. Basically saying that women want to show off their bodies for exercising. This guy's another winner, so screenshot that sometime. BYU Provo doesn't even have a dress code. I know, y'all want a part two? Today I wanted to share my ics about BYU, which is the university that I attended. BYU is known for being a highly LDS populated college, aka Mormon. And to give you context to this, I went to BYU as a newly baptized member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I just joined the religion and then I went there two weeks later. So I had a lot of culture shock, to say the least. So here are a few things that gave me dick. Okay. First and foremost, Nickmos. One word. 
If you don't know what a NICMO is, NICMO stands for non-committal makeout. And yes, it's a real thing at BYU. I think the biggest thing that gave me the ick about it was people would literally text you NICMO question mark. And I remember my freshman year, people would gather together outside like a building. I remember there's this one tree and that was known as like the NICMO tree and people would gather there to NICMO. So yeah, enough about that one. Okay, number two singing hymns in non-religious classes. So since it was a religious university, it was really common to pray before class. And in religious classes, we would sometimes sing hymns before class as well to bring the spirit in and to get class started. But I remember my English class, we would sing hymns before class every day. And I was like, we're talking about writing papers. It's okay if we pray, but singing the hymns was just a little too much. But I know a lot of other classes do that. So I don't, I don't know. It's just a little too much. Okay. Three, the dating culture. Ah, <sighs> BYU is in Provo and that's where it's located. And all of Provo just has a crazy dating culture. Just to give you a few examples, it's really common for people to get engaged and married really, really quick. Like people will start dating and then two weeks later, they will literally be engaged. I kid you not. Like I know people that did that. It's crazy. And the dating there is just, like, really intense. Everyone's looking to get married. And so, like, nowhere's, nowhere's safe. You can be asked out on a date literally anywhere. Of course, like, at the gym is, like, a really common place. But also just, like, in the library. If you're just minding your own business with headphones on, people will literally come up to you and ask you on a date. Or if you're, like, in the bookstore, the cafeteria, or even, like, sitting in class. And it's just really, really intense. Okay, fourth. We're going to end on this one. And I might have to do a part two later. Harry Potter. I don't know what it is with BYU students, but I swear they are all obsessed with Harry Potter. Okay, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. And I like Harry Potter. Like, I've seen the movies. I haven't seen... I haven't read the books. But there's so many people there that just love Harry Potter, and I don't know why. Okay, I'm gonna have to do part two. Okay, I am back with part two of things that gave me the ick at BYU. And I just wanted to say I still love BYU... I loved my experience at BYU, and I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is the religion that BYU is associated with. So with that said, let's do part two. Okay, first one. Starting home strong, BYU milk. BYU has an abnormal amount of milk on their campus. You can literally get it anywhere, like in any building on campus, because they sell it in their vending machines. And I thought this was a little weird when I first started going there, especially because people are obsessed with it. Like, they have normal flavors of milk, and they have chocolate milk, but they also have this special cookies and cream milk, and people go wild about it. And that cookies and cream milk has so much sugar in it that I swear if a small Victorian child drank it, they would 100% die. Like, too much sugar. And I remember when I was at BYU... They came out with a new milk flavor, and it was a big deal because a new flavor of milk was coming out. And I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it was mint chocolate chip milk. And that one had a lot of sugar in it as well. And I think it was just a temporary thing, so maybe they'll come out with more flavors of milk in the future. So, yeah. Feel like you milk. Okay, next one. <laughs> this one made me laugh. People singing out loud while walking across campus. I don't know if this happens at other universities, but this happens all the time at BYU, and it always gave me the ick. Literally, people just have their headphones in, and they are just walking across campus singing at the top of their lungs. And I don't know how they don't get embarrassed. Yes, they will just be singing Broadway play music or religious hymns or music that's popular on the radio, and... They're just walking across campus, singing out loud, no fear. I don't know. <laughs> that was always really funny to me. Okay, next one. Testing center. The BYU testing center. If you didn't go to BYU, the testing center is, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a building that you had to go to to take your tests. And there's a few things about the testing center that gave me the ick. First off, is that if you took your test on the last day that it was available, you had to pay money. Usually it was $5. Sometimes it'd be more, if according to the class. But I would always have to pay money because I would wait till the last day because I needed more time to study. And, yeah. And then the other thing about the testing center 
was that there was always a line for the testing center. And so you'd go there all ready to take your test, and then you'd have to wait in line for an hour, which just added more stress and anxiety. Okay, I'm running out of time, so we might have to do our part three later. Things in my BYU approved housing that just make sense. A bottle of wine just for cooking, of course. Birth control to regulate my period. Kettle herbal tea only, of course. Immodest swimsuits, not mine. Things in my BYU approved housing that just makes sense part two. Poppy in the fridge it isn't our our last roommate left it here. To empty rooms because we make people uncomfy. Boys passed the chastity line. This was a one-time thing. They had a bathroom emergency. Celine wash for our unholy multiple piercings. I was peer pressure. Feminist stickers. We got sent these in the mail. We actually know we're... Do you believe women should have rights? I want to say yeah. I want to support it. Like, I, I really want to support it. I want to say yeah. I want to say yeah. I want to say yeah, but... Do you support gay people? Um, you know, ooh, I mean, yeah, to some extent, I think, I just, like, don't force your lifestyle on, on other people. Because, like, I live by the Bible. Like, we cite a constitution with God. And to me, I take this to heart. If, Gay people work fine, just don't bring that. Awesome, awesome, cool. Cool, cool! Oh, hi, uh, do you support the Black Lives Matter movement? So personally, I've never experienced Black Lives Matter, but I, I, I know like a, one person who has gone through the Black Lives Matter, and I just think like, there's like police getting hurt too, and I- I've been going out with Nick Nelson since I was 14. He likes rugby and Formula One, Animals, especially dogs. The Marvel Universe, the sound felt tips make on paper, rain, drawing on shoes, Disneyland, and minimalism. He also likes me. His hair is dark blonde. Do you believe Black Lives Matter? Um, I believe listening matters. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Do you believe in equality? Uh, I'm not too sure what that is, but once I do more research, I will definitely let you know. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So, are you a feminist? No. Oh, period. Do you believe in gay rights? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, <laughs> all gays having rights. Um, I can say I really enjoy Ellen. Yeah, uh, I think I'll have to check the honor code for that or check with the elders okay perfect so mm -hmm. who's your favorite black historical Ooh. figure Ooh, uh i would say zendaya nice yeah. So would you rather get a second piercing or commit mass genocide? Oh shucks. Um, <laughs> mass genocide it is. So would you rather blow up an entire orphanage of children or soak before marriage? 
Wowza, Willy Walkers. I'm going to have to blow up the orphanage. Would you rather be um, forced to wear a bikini or withhold food from the world's population for the next week? Oh, gosh darn it, gee whiz. I mean, a week's not that long without food. They'll be okay. Would you rather have a sip of caffeinated tea or would you rather run over my dog? With a semi truck. Oh, lickety lickety Zuzu. Um, I think I'm gonna have to run over your dog with a semi. <laughs> Would you rather donate your money to anything other than the Mormon Church, or create a mass famine that wipes out the whole country of Germany? Oh, gee Willikers. Um, yeah, I think famine's gonna have to be the answer on this one. Mm -hmm. Would you rather hold hands with your boyfriend before the third date? Or behead. <laughs> be head. Be head and de limb illiterate kids. <laughs> Whew, uh, riff ramp on zoo. Um, I'm gonna have to de limb the litter of children. <laughs>